Hi everybody and welcome to another taping for my podcast, Circle Up and Get Real. I have been doing um, Facebook Lives when I don't have guests and that's what I'm going to do today because I happen to be wearing a logoed uh, fleece from a former job that I had and it got me thinking about the um, memories and past and what we can take from the past and take with us on purpose instead of being stuck in old ruts and regrets and things like that. So I started thinking about this and it reminded me of the book Mind, Time and Power that I'm also reading. Um, Anthony Hamilton was on my podcast last week and he's the author of this book. Really good thoughts and I just wanted to share some of the things I was thinking about this morning. I am currently facilitating my Real Me intensive course and we have what we call mechanics every week which is homework and we've been talking about noticing and then pondering and so I don't call it journaling because sometimes people get a little freaky about this whole concept of journaling so we call it pondering and when you take notes about things you're noticing you'll start noticing more things on purpose instead of just having things occur and then missing them. And so we've been talking about God winks and we've been talking about um, noticing the energy that you're bringing with you in a room and that you are walking into when you're walking into a room. So things like that are, are, are causing me to also be more aware. And this morning when I was getting ready and deciding what I wanted to wear, I picked up this old, very old fleece, um, which I shouldn't have to wear on March 23rd, but we still have a lot of snow. So it's one of my favorites. I really like the feel of this, and I've had it for many, many years, as I said. Um, And the logo reminded me of a former job, and so that's what I wanted to talk about today. So as always, you are welcome to put comments if you're watching this live. Obviously, if you're watching it, later on the replay it won't matter that you put the comments but put the comments anyway I just won't be able to address them so um, I'm going to just do the countdown and then we'll be ready for the actual podcast so with that oh by the way I'm getting my hair cut today so if you're seeing this it's my hair's really flat because it's very long and I'm getting it cut so I didn't wash it this morning <laughs> too much information more than you need to know okay anyway I'm gonna do the countdown and start the podcast recording three two one. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Circle Up and Get Real where we talk about things that matter with people who matter and today those people who matter are you, the listeners. Today I am pondering this whole concept of future and past. Last week I interviewed Anthony Hamilton and he really got me thinking about everything that's not currently in the present because in the present I have an opportunity to change my mind about things but in the future things haven't happened yet and in the past they already have and so as I'm thinking about these concepts of carrying with me either regrets from the past or you know good memories from the past I have the opportunity to change what I'm doing in the fu- in the present in order to live into a different future. I know that sounds really kind of convoluted right now as I just said that, but I understood from Anthony that both the past and the future are kind of in the same energetic space because they aren't anything I can currently do anything about. The cool thing about creating the future from the present is that I can actually live into a future of my choice if I am aware of things. And Anthony told us last week that we can actually change the effects the past has on us if we are remembering things with any kind of negative energetic charge because we have the ability to take that energetic charge out of the memories and the regrets. And then we can just have them be kind of like an empty shell of a memory not in a bad way or a good way just it is what it is it happened the way it happened so all of that to say i grabbed this shirt today this this polar fleece that i'm wearing if you're watching the video 
podcast here, you can see that I'm wearing a blue kind of a, a fleece. And it has the logo of a former employer on it. And I really like this polar fleece. And it reminded me of this job I had. And the job was one of my absolute favorite jobs. When I look back on my career, this job was at a startup training company. It, it didn't exist. It was created in the moment. And I was one of the first employees. And I got to choose my title as we were going forward in this startup. And my title was Director of Vision and Results. Really, I was sales and marketing. I was uh, helping the organization gain clients. I hate to say selling because I, I don't consider myself to be a great salesperson, but I'm really good at sharing a vision. And back then, it, it was a long time ago. It was earlier in my career. There were a lot of things I learned at that job. Um, that was one of my many as I was searching for my purpose and what I wanted to do with my life. And at this company, I was part of a leadership team that I was an employee, however, I was not part of the ownership group, which ended up being a good thing because this was part of a bankruptcy where the vision for the organization was so strong that it caused some of the owners to do things that took them out of their own integrity. And I came back one day from having a, a meeting somewhere and my furniture was being repossessed. So I recognized that this was probably not going to go the way I had hoped it would go. And it reminded me of what happens when people are so attached to a vision or a belief that a future will be something that the present uh, information is saying might cause them to have to shift a little bit. Um, I might say that again, if a future vision of something is so strong that it's causing the people to deny what's really happening, the truth of the present, I can see where that could be uh, a really bad thing. And I think about all of the scandals that we've heard about over the years in business failures where the CEOs were doing things that were illegal, doing things that were not right. And it caused a lot of downfall to people. I'm thinking specifically of Bernie Madoff and some of those Ponzi schemes that happened. I know from my own experience that in giving the benefit of the doubt, looking back, that the CEOs or owners of this company were really committed to what it could be and maybe denied reality in the moment. That's not to say that this wasn't a super great experience for me personally. I learned so much about myself. I learned so much about what I really am put on the earth to do. I learned that while I denied my um, my calling to be a teacher, because everybody in my family, my, my mom's side of the family, they were all teachers, I never wanted to be a teacher. I don't know why, but I never wanted to be an actual classroom teacher. But it turns out it's in my DNA, and I am a teacher. I am a teacher, but I'm not a traditional teacher. I like to learn things. And I like to share my lived experience so that other people can have dialogues about things that matter. You know that about this podcast. That's kind of the foundation for the podcast. And when I'm in my element and I'm in the present, when I am being exactly what I'm here to be, things flow so easily. Yet it's really easy for many people too, me, me sometimes included, to get caught up in either what didn't work in the past or any regrets I might have about things and then carry that forward, which then creates a future from that past. Because in the present, I have so many opportunities and so many possibilities and so many things I can actually take action on. But if I'm allowing the past regret or the future worry to cloud my ability to be present, then my life's going to look pretty much like it's always looked because I'm not aware enough to take different action. So when we look back on the past, I look back at this job that I really liked. I learned a lot. I had no control. I wasn't a, an owner. I had no control over what was happening with the outcome of the company. I, you know, There was a, a lawsuit and there were depositions and I was deposed, 
but there was nothing I needed to do because I was not aware of the kind of shady deals that were happening. I'm glad I wasn't more aware than I was at the time because I couldn't be accountable to something I didn't know anything about. I'm sorry that that had to happen to the owners and the CEO of, of the company and I will believe that because that mistake happened, because that event happened back then, that they learned from it and moved on in more ethical ways. And so then there are lessons that we can take from emotional um, events that happen in our past where we don't have to let the emotion take us back into regret all the time. It's possible to look back on things where we made mistakes or didn't do things maybe the way we would do them if we had different information. It doesn't have to derail us. And I love that I'm learning that even about myself so that I don't have to look back on my past with any regrets. I can look back knowing that I did the absolute best I could with what I knew at the time. That releases any emotion that would turn into regret and allows me to just keep the stories, the history or herstory, if you want to say that, of uh, my life. I can say, well, this is what took place and I don't have to be pulled back or pulled down. In the same vein, I can think about the present without a lot of worry when I am aware. Setting goals is a future activity that's done in the present, right? When you set goals, you're actually future projecting, but you're doing it in the present. So if let's, let's say I'm setting goals and I look back on my life and I say, well, I've never done that. That's never happened. When I tried to do it before, this is the outcome. And that would cause me to, in the present, be less than optimistic, let's say. And I might say, well, I'm going to set the goal this way because it's all I can do. I, Who says I could be any better than I am? I'm allowing the past to cloud my future because in the present, I maybe don't know I'm doing this, but I'm carrying residual regret. And in the present, when I'm setting my goals, I'm setting them from a clouded mindset. Does that make sense? So I've got worry in my present, which is preventing me from setting any kind of goals that could be different from the way the past has been. And what I've learned is the formulas that all the successful business people say that you should do and all the advice we get about standing on the shoulders of giants and you don't have to do it yourself and you can t learn from other people's experiences is all great in theory. But if I'm not present in my goal setting because I'm carrying with me residual regret that I'm not even aware of, all I will do in the present when I'm setting future goals is be resentful and carry really low energy with that because I would say something like, well, sure, that works for them. Well, sure, they you know, were born with a silver spoon in their mouth. Well, sure, they've got, you know, I'll make all kinds of excuses. But I don't know I'm doing this when it's carrying residual regret. So the whole idea here is to take a look back, you know, take some time in the present to go, okay, what was it about whatever happened in the past that I'm still carrying regret about or resentment about or anything? And there are techniques you can learn that will allow you to release the emotion from those negative experiences so that the emotion doesn't pull you back. Because in that space then, the future gets a whole lot brighter because it's not clouded by past regret. And when I set goals to allow, let's say, let's say it like this, when I visualize my real true desired future, Without any of that, but, 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 yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, without any of that, when I set my future vision on every kind of possibility that I truly desire and get rid of any of that residual regret, in the present, I can see a clearer future. And then, and then that goal setting process is very different. It's not from a place of should and yeah, but. And who do I think I am? 
it's in a place of wow okay so what if that could happen and there's a whole lot of energy that pulls me into the future instead of drags me into it how about that and i think about a quote i don't have it in front of me right now but it was a deepak chopra quote that is something like um, imagine right now your desired future with everything you could ever want at your disposal right now so take some time and do that he doesn't say that in the quote but if we thought about that right now take some time and do that and then he says now take the memory of that future and bring it into the present and allow it to guide you in the actions you take right now I love that concept and so as I'm just reflecting on all the lessons that I learned from this job I loved, but which didn't last because it was, I don't know, it, it just didn't last. I'm not even going to make a, a reason for that. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about what I love to do. I learned a lot about myself. And then in my next job, I took that new awareness with me into the next job and tried to bring that new persona to a position that maybe wasn't ready for my new persona (laughs) and that job didn't last either because I felt that I needed to go back to an old version of me I wasn't ready I needed more I had more to learn maybe Um, whatever again and looking back I can also release any negative emotions and regrets from that position when I look back as Anthony reminded us last week we can only connect the dots of our lives looking backward not looking forward but when we do that we can see patterns and then we can say oh that was a negative emotion I can release that negative emotion so that my future pull will be clearer and isn't that the way we want to live in the present with a clear vision of a core desired future not something that we are destined to just fall into by default all of this is kind of what we talk about in our real me course next one will be coming up in may so if you've heard anything that is intriguing or interesting to you at all i'd encourage you to go take a look at our getrealcircle.com and take a look see if there's something that you would like to be part of in our next course And, um, yeah, as always, get real. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you again. Bye-bye.